lab number 262. With this lab, we're starting the new lab series that will be called Advanced Messenger. And uh, this lab series will showcase us the process of uh, bootstrapping or actually moving the existing projects uh, based on Ionic 2 with TypeScript to mobile first platform. Uh, actually, we will be adding the plugins uh, for mobile first platform, the, the SDK, inside the hybrid mobile application built with Ionic. We will start basically in this lab with uh, cloning the repository with existing Ionic app and installing those plugins and then registering application on the server. So this will be the simple task for this lab. So let's start with opening the terminal and navigating to our uh, dev workspaces. And here we will create new folder, let's call it IAM. So this will be the root uh, folder for our project called Advanced Messenger. So now we need to navigate to this folder and we can implement the folder and we can uh, do git init to initialize the empty repository. Then we can uh, add the remote repository using git remote add, then type origin and pass the URL for this repository that you can find in description for this lab. Finally, we can do git pull origin Initial. Initial is the name of the branch that we have there. Just like that. Now we have two folders, one called Advanced Messenger and this is the client-side application. The second one called Mock Server and this is the simple app uh, written in Node. So this is based on Node.js and it provides us the mocks for our APIs that we will be using during our uh, lab. So to start it, we need just to type node and then the name of the file, which is server.js. And you see that it's running uh, and listening on port 4567. Let's verify how it works. Let's open our browser and navigate to localhost 4567 API. You can see that mock APIs are running. We can go back to terminal, open one more tab. Let's, by the way, uh, set a title to this one, something like node, or even better to go with mock. Uh, and in the second terminal tab, we will go to our client side application. So before we'll be able to run it, we need to install the dependencies and that can be done using npm install. Now when we have dependencies in place, we can type ionic serve to launch the live load server from ionic. This is our application. Uh, let's go to inspection tab. Let's put it uh, underneath the app and I will just do some small arrangements. like that and enable emulation uh, to see how our app looking let's say on Nexus 5. So uh, we see some errors related to uh, access control allow region. Uh, sometimes uh, this course extension that we have to enable cross region uh, calls is not working so the way how to fix it is to disable and enable once again and to refresh this page and now you see no errors and uh, you see the app is running. So basically you already know what this app is about and uh, our task will be uh, not to actually develop this app but to move this app and use the features and capabilities of mobile first platform within this app. So to do that we will need uh, to perform several actions. The first one will be to start the server, of course, because mobile first platform has a client-side architecture where there is a client-side SDK and there is always a server in the middle. So we will open one more terminal tab and navigate to our uh, dev server folder. 
So now we can start server with run SR scripts and if we will provide the properties, uh, I mean parameters minus bg, it means that it will start in background and even after we will close this terminal, it will continue running uh, in case you need that. Uh, so then you can just tail the logs and watch the, what's happening with the server and, and, and so on and not just keeping this window every time open. So uh, our next step will be to actually install plugins and then register application on the server. For that, we'll go back to our previous tab. We will close the um, Ionic Life Reload. We don't need it anymore. And we can also uh, close that window. So what we actually need is uh, we need to install those plugins. And that can be done uh, right from the repository because those plugins are in the repository. And before we will install it, we just need to add the platform. So type Cordova platform at Android to add the Android platform. We are on Linux, so this is the... Uh, easiest option for us uh, to work just with Android. Uh, afterwards, after we added the platform, we can just type Cordova plugin add and then the name of the plugin. So basically, we have several that we will be using during uh, this lab series. The so first one is the core Cordova plugin MFP. Then there will be a uh, Cordova plugin MFP push. Uh, this is the second one. And the third one is JSON store. So push uh, is used for push messaging. And uh, JSON store, of course, is used uh, for on-device storage, uh, for providing that uh, ability to store documents in JSON format on device. So let's install those two. And finally, JSON store. Just like that. Let's take a look on our server. Uh, it has started good and we have our plugins also installed. Now we can use again live load server. This time it will be using MFP dev app uh, preview. Uh, because this live reload server that we are going to run um, will know about those plugins and will know about the security and everything that we will um, test in the future while the Ionic serve uh, has no clue about it and uh, you cannot use it in, in, in a real development with MFP API. Before doing the preview, uh, it's good to register our app on the server uh, because um, without registration you won't be able to afterwards, uh, for example, call adapter with the security and get the data and so on. So the idea how it can be done uh, is really simple behind. So either you can open uh, the browser. Let me, for example, open uh, one more window and navigate to a local host. 9080 MFP console. Uh, admin is the username and admin is the password. So either you're doing that registration manually via graphical interface, just click new, select your type of application, for example, Android, type any name you want, uh, type the package and the version and click register. Uh, so that package and the version can be found in uh, config XML uh, from Cordova. You will see that uh, version number and so on. So this, is, this should match. Uh, either you can do it automatically. So for that, we can open the terminal and type MFP dev app register. So by default, it will be registered on the local server. Uh, you can register to remote server. For that, you need to add a reference and then type MFP app register and the name of your uh, server or reference. Uh, to propagate the changes, as you can see, we need to type uh, Cordova prepare. And now we can uh, actually refresh our page uh, to see the application. So now when we have our application here, uh, we can start controlling it, meaning disabling access, uh, adding some security and so on. 
but of course we'll be doing everything step by step. So for now we continue um, with the live reload MFP dev app preview and select the browser here. So I will open it in the same window where we were doing it previously. Uh, basically, it is working the same way, but this time we see the WL client in its targets and in its success, which means that uh, mobile first platform APIs are already there, loaded and ready to use. Unfortunately, as you may notice, uh, during the application startup, we got those messages at the end, right after we already called for data, got the response and so on. Uh, so. Because we will be doing those calls afterwards with API, it's really important for us to start working with the app only after API is in it and not before them. So for that, uh, we basically need to catch the specific event that got dispatched uh, from those um, APIs. And uh, right after catching that event, you can continue loading of your application and using the calls uh, to backends and so on. Uh, so for that, uh, we will open our uh, EDE. In this lab series, we will use uh, Visual Studio Code. So we will open a specific folder. In our case, it will be Dev Workspaces IM. Let me just do some arrangements. Uh, just like that. So what we are interested in is that basically the plugins that we installed, for example, MFP um, in Bootstrap JS file uh, sends the events, uh, dispatching those events that we need to catch. And the event that we are interested in is MFP JS loaded. So once we catch that event, we can say that the APIs are there and ready to work. So we'll be catching them um, within the application code in our case, uh, because we are using Ionic 2 with the TypeScript, the apps got bootstrapped uh, in app.ts file with this Ionic bootstrap my app. Uh, and basically uh, what is happening is that after bootstrapping, uh, the page uh, got loaded with the real navigation after setting this root page to a specific page from our tabs. Uh, before that moment, uh, nothing will happen. So for example, if we will comment this line, and save the file, you will see that the app load uh, will start, but then nothing will happen afterwards. And you also may notice that the live reload server didn't work, uh, because there is one more trick that we need to do. Uh, basically, this live reload that we just launched using MFP dev app preview is looking on www folder. And here you can see that we have the build uh, and index.html, and in build folder we have all that structure that got compiled from app folder. So to get that compi compilation working, uh, there is a task needed to be launched using Gulp, that's called watch. And uh, basically that is uh, done uh, by default when you type in Ionic Surf. Now we need to do it manually. So uh, for example, uh, we can open uh, the terminal tab where we had a server and navigate to our dev workspaces I am advanced messenger and just launch Gulp watch. Uh, while it's loading, let's set the title here to Gulp. And now, uh, not, in order not to wait, we can just relaunch MFPDF app preview. So you can see that now our page is not actually loading, it's just stuck. And as soon as uh, that line will get some commented, it will continue loading. So what we will do here is uh, we will listen for that event and uh, implement uh, that root page um, 
equal top page only when we got that event. So uh, we'll catch the event using the renderer and this is the part of Angular core. So just put it here. Render. Then we need to add a reference to it uh, down here in constructor. So just type renderer uh, to render like that. And now we can uh, register that listener using uh, render dot uh, listen global and we need just to specify what to listen. So firstly uh, we will listen document because this will be a global dispatched event and then we will need to provide the name uh, of that thing that we are going to listen and uh, this mfpgs loaded. And finally uh, what we will do is uh, we will specify uh, the callback after it will be catched. Just like that. So let's do some logging here. Something like MFP API in it complete. Just like that. And uh, we also can uh, call some function that will do for us the init itself. So uh, let's call it something like uh, MFP init and here after MFP init within the MFP init of course uh, we will actually map those roots page to tabs page just like that. And let's also do the logging. Let's rename it to MFP init complete. Uh, that will be better. Like that. So now we can save this file and see what will happen with our application. As you can see, it's still working on the top. Uh, we cache the events uh, and uh, we actually call the function of init in which they applied those navigation changes and um, basically the app continues to work as expected. That's all for this lab. We'll continue development in our next labs. Thank you.